right. On the agenda, we have the U.S. stock market open. We're going to actually listen to the trading pit of the S&P 500 located in Chicago. Then um, we have Powell speaking, who is a voter and has been babbling on about raising interest rates. And he can jack the market pretty quickly. But also at that exact same time, we have uh, PMI services coming out. So it could be a pretty busy hour, and that's why I wanted to do a second. Just for documenting in history, uh, my name is Wayne McDonald. I'm the Chief FX Market Strategist for Traders Way. Traders Way is the sponsor of this webinar, and uh, it's hosted today by Forex.today. Thank you for all of that. Let's get going. The circuit opens briefly in a brief amount of time. Let me remind you that trading and investing is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, does not predict future results. Therefore, stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, never risk money you cannot afford to lose. Don't touch the, sto the stove, it might be hot, you could get burned. Don't go outside, you might get hit by lightning. So tradethenews.com will bring us the open of the S&P 500 trading pit live. Thank you, tradethenews.com. Here we go. By the way, the numbers you're going to hear are these two guys. They're, they're in a desk just above the S&P 500 trading pit, and they're reading the hand signals of the traders actually in the pit. And I went to visit them. Pretty cool guys. Can you hear them in the background? That's the trading pit. Even 06 half early call, 10 seconds till we open. 78% pit population. 06, 06 even 06 half. 3, 2, 1. And we are open for business. Boston buys 2. Morgan sells 2, 2, and 1. Boston a buyer 15 times. 6 even 6 half. Shycore DT off to the side. Smith quiet. Goldman bought 15, sold 15. Six even, six half, six half, six eighty. Six half, six eighty. A slow push this morning, oh six even, oh six half. At six even. This market awaits news. Be very happy and thankful that you're with Trade the News. You'll get it first, oh six even, oh six half. Oh six even, oh six half. Six half, six eighty. Oh six half, oh six eighty. Opening range 2106 half, 2107 even. 06 half, 0680. 6 half, 680. 6 half, 680. 06 half, 680. 6 half, 680. 06 half, 680. Seven even bid. Jack or sells two and two. Seven even trade. Seven even seven thirty. Seven even seven thirty. Seven even seven twenty. Seven even seven thirty. Seven even seven half. Oh seven even oh seven half. Seven even, seven even, seven even. That's seven even. So, so what you hear, the O, right, six half, six even, that kind of stuff. What they're reading is the head signals, and the six half, six even is the, um, that's the bid ask spread. So, you see. 2114.0. Okay? So they're reading four even 
right? Four eight four even. Now it's three eight, right? Four six four eight. So their their spread's a little higher than the ECN, and of course they're reading the futures price, not the cash price. So there's a slight difference, but they would say you know, right? So they're reading all that. That's what they're reading. The bid ask spread. Five even, five half. Oh, five even, oh, five half. Five even and four seventy bid five. We slide it through the pivots. Four half, five even. I still like that. Yeah, I'm not going to say. For what? By the way, if you look at the. Dolex, it's current four hour chart. It's on a cluster of the 55 and the 21, worth the exact same thing, which is an odd, right? It's an odd one. It doesn't usually occur that way. So now we're, um, we're about 11 and a half ultimately from the U US dollar. I'm fine this morning, by the way, so. Oh, 05 even, oh, 05 half. I said I'm okay. Looks like you're going on break. Hey, Mike says it sounds almost empty. Did you hear him saying that his was about 78% population? See, that'll be in, that's important. So, like, next week, what if he says, uh, you know, 50% population? Probably going to be some volume at the open and the close, and the rest will be very quiet. Okay. There's also situations where the market opens and, and they just go crazy. Well, now I know that something's probably going on. But I also like to hear, you know, um, like what did Goldman Sachs do? Did you catch that? They bought two, they sold two on the open, and then that was it. <laughs> Got those orders in, they're done. Now they're waiting for the news. So now it's almost a form of sent. Now that means you got to apply at tradethenews.com if you want that service. And then I think their basic service is uh, I don't know a couple hundred bucks. I don't know. I've had a site license from them for for many 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 years. Um, and then to get the live S and P 500 data feed, that's even more money on top of that. And their service for institutional investors. So even if you want to pay the money, they might not let you in. Now if you tell them you know, you're a student of Wayne McDonald, they'll let you in. But you still have to pay all the full prices and I don't get any money or commission or anything. Just so you know, full, disclo full disclosure. I'm not going to nickel and dime you. Oh, um, I've had a relationship with them for eight years, maybe. And they're the best. So consider it if you want. It's a nice feature to have. So I just, like I said, I use it as a sentiment feed, um, you know, if they're going crazy, maybe I'm missing something, right? So again, we're awaiting the ISM news and the Powell speech. So let me pause tradethenews.com. Okay, so um, we have seen that the market so in the previous webinar that we did earlier today, we looked at the past history of, um, of the PCE news that came out at 8.30. And what we saw over and over and over and over again, that the PCE, the PCE news didn't tend to move the market more than 25 pips. And even then, you'd have to have a, a disappointing or an unbelievably good number. And it came out as expected, and our USD yen went up. 15 pips and down 15 pips, which was predictable. And that's what happened. Good. No trade. We stayed out. Nice. But we also saw that at 10 o'clock, or just before 10 o'clock, the market tended to move more like 50 or 60 pips. And that, that, should, that move should start in about eight minutes from now. The Powell speech, if you watched, uh, was it yesterday or the day before? He came out guns blazing. 
he said he's a voting member of the FOMC, and he said if it was up to him, he would jack up interest rates starting in September. But September was off the table a couple of days ago, but now it's back on the table. He's like, man, I would, if it were me, I would raise interest rates in September. I would raise them again in December. Well, okay, well, he's only one voting member, but that's very significant, right? Then he said, yeah, but, you know, he thinks September is still 50-50. Yeah, they might raise, which means some of his other buddies on the FOMC also want to do it. Holy smokes. Dollar got ripper strong, right? So we'll see what happens. Still very, very quiet. All right, so the PMI services, um, last month it was 56.2. This month we're expecting 56.5. <laughs> whatever isn't it fascinating how these economists are so good like let's take GDP for example they can tell you it's 2.1 but it's certainly not 2.0 and 1.9 forget about it just wait. because their analysis is so good isn't that laughable Nobody ever questions it. Oh, 2.1. That was much better than we only expected, 2.0. I think I'll throw down a bunch of money on that information. Does anybody actually believe that they're that good in their analysis? Why don't they say GDP is 2.13659? about five minutes so I guess it it would make sense to move over to the USD euro USD So has it, have you guys been practicing uh, your front run? I taught you maybe, what, a week ago? How to get your, your front run on before the equity open? All right. Oh, who remembers? Who remembers? Uh, like two weeks ago, I said wheat prices would, even though they were at a pathetic level. Does anyone remember that? Yeah. All right. According to today, um, seven minutes ago, the IGC. I don't remember what that stands for. Uh, whatever. They cut their 2015-16 global wheat production forecast. They cut it. Eh, not by a lot, but they're forecasting several tons, several million tons less than they were before. They might not even know the full reality of it, but they're they're cutting. They're not raising their forecast. They're cutting their forecast. Well, I'm not watching wheat right now, but maybe, just maybe, it's starting. Aha! Maybe. I don't know. I'm not watching wheat prices. Wheat prices could be tanking for all I know. I have no idea. I don't watch it as much as I used to. Okay, about two and a half minutes. Good, good. Shield up, red alert. Let's go. Let's get ready.
Does this say funny? It's one ninety nine thirty. Not even nine half. Not even nine half. At nine even. Nine half bid at all even. All even bid. All even. All even. There's a report citing the Eurogroup official saying Eurogroup once again is waiting on Greece to come back with a better proposal. All even. All half. All even. All half. Eurogroup talks indefinitely suspended. All even. All half. I got a low of ninety-eight eighty. All even. All half. Ninety-eight quarter in the minis. I don't know even. Matt, where's the two star up there? Outside. 99.5, 99.80. 99.5, 99.80. Matt, where's the two star up there? Outside. 99.5, 99.80. 99.5, 99.80. Oh, even, even, oh, half. Oh, even, oh, half. 93, 92.5. 93.92.5, okay. Oh, even, oh, half. We've been raised so far. Oh, even, oh, half. Oh, even, oh, half. Oh, even oh half, oh, even oh thirty, oh, even oh twenty, at oh even ninety nine seventy, but at oh, oh even oh thirty, at oh Goldman at oh sells four four no five lots sold twenty five there, oh even bit oh even oh thirty, at oh DT sells five oh trade at oh ninety nine seventy, but at oh. What is it? oh oh even a bit oh even oh half. Oh, even oh half, oh half, oh eighty. Under a minute to the Clinton oh, Market Services PMI for the U.S. expected fifty six point five, like, oh, half, three even. tenths from the prior fifty six point two. Oh half, one even, one even, one half, oh one even, oh one half, one half, one eighty. Matt, this is going to get whippy today. Oh one half, oh two even. Yeah. That one half, oh one even, oh one half. Oh one even, oh one half. Oh one even, oh one half. VIX is up 23 cents, up 17 cents. Ah, that's whipping around a little bit. One even, oh one half. Oh one even, oh one half. The June preliminary market services PMI in just a few seconds. Oh one even, oh one half. One even, one half. What is on half 180? 54.8, 54.8 is below the 56.5 expected the deposit. 54.6 down from 56 prior. What even one half? All right, it's a miss. What half 180? At a half. What even one half? What even one half? All right, no response out of the trading pit. So lots of news coming out. The PMI was a miss. Let me get the subcomponent. By the way, it's a preliminary thing, so I wouldn't make too much of a big deal about it. Um, we're waiting, really, Powell speaking. Um, employment subcomponent, it's a miss, 54 and a half. We're expecting 55 and a half. New orders, uh, again, a small miss. Came out 55, we're expecting 55 and a half. And composite, 54 and a half versus 56. So it miss on everything in the uh, market service BMI. Uh, to go through recently, Euro talks are indefinitely suspended, waiting for Greece to return with a, a better proposal. Uh, Today's uh, core PCE came out as expected, 0 0.1. Year over year, it's 1.2. Last month was actually revised higher, so a little bit of good news. Personal income, 0 0.5 as expected, but 0 0.9 on the spending. 
So we're getting okay wages, but the Americans are spending it, which is good. You don't want them saving it like they used to. Initial jobless claims, 271,000. About as expected, no big deal on that. PCE deflator, 0.3 as expected month over month, 0.2 year over year as expected. But last, uh, last month, year over year, revised up, which is, you know, I would say it's basically a little, little flat on the news today, but just a slight lean toward positiveness for the U.S. dollar. And no move yet. So I didn't have Powell on my calendar, but you guys said it was. Two or three people said that he's speaking at 2.45, or I mean uh, at 9.45, so it's, it's 9.48. No response to the market. Do you guys have a, uh, since we, we're a team here, since we're trading as a group, does anybody have a, a link to his speech? Thank you, Demeter. Let me let me pull that up. Let's try to do it as a YouTube video. Hopefully this doesn't kill our webinar. Well, I don't want to do that. It's funny. All the videos are YouTube videos to the software. Are you... Wasn't sure if that killed it. He hasn't opened his mouth yet. Okay. Well, then we just, just wait. Yeah, I never had it on my calendar. Okay, so you notice we're right on 112, which sucks because that's where I shorted it yesterday. So 30 hours later, we're still here at 112. I'll tell you what I did though. I sold it at 112. It was, I think, at 96. Oh, where is it? Um, where are you? London yesterday? That's London today, isn't it? Ah, forget it. But my target was uh, 1150. So I'm. I think I got knocked out by five pips, and I think I missed the target by five pips. It's just one of those days, nothing happened. Powell, building a safer payment system. Thank you, Mike. You sure that's not yesterday's speech, huh? Because this link you shared with me, he's, it's off air. Wednesday, June 17th. Well, it's June 25th. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> I 
Did you guys get me all fired up over nothing? I trusted you. Nothing else really going on. Federal Reserve. All right. Well, I'm imagining what you're giving me is right. I can't click on all these links and run a webinar at the same time. So I said I'd be here for you. Uh, I'm still here. I think there's a slight bullishness in the air. It's slight. It's like a, a wisp. You're like, what's that? Oh, there's a hint of bullishness in the air. Yeah. But it's just a light scent of bullishness for the USD. All right. Thank you, guys. Guess we'll have to wait. has arrived at the EU summit. Hey. Five half back minis. Pivots. O five sixty six. It's up on a T. So you got nothing but negative headlines that are coming out of Greece, no deal. At three even, two seventy minute three. Three even three thirty. Three, three a group of fish oh, three down just half. commenting that their meeting is going to take a brief break. It was after another official said the talks were indefinitely suspended as they awaited a new Greek proposal. I know, Eric, this would be an appropriate place. Mr. Zanters, the leader of the meeting, saying that he's convinced they will reach a deal to overcome the crisis. All right, absolutely nothing has happened. It's funny, that's what our analysis said earlier today, so I guess either Powell's going to speak or he's not going to speak. No. No, I just said, no, no thank you, Eric, but thank you anyways. Look, you share something good today, and all of a sudden other people start sharing things with viruses some other day, and I just don't want to manage it. Oh, you want me to share something? Uh, not while running a webinar, dude. It's top of the hour. It could include the Lear case, King versus Burwell. That case is focused on a challenge to federal government subsidies. In well, I don't like to sit here with trade the news running. That's inappropriate. So, uh, well... That's a sample. So if you like trade the news, you should pay the money. And if you're not an institutional investor, just let them know you're you, you know you're a good close friend of Wayne McDonald, and you put that on your application. All right, so just like I said, just a hint of dollar strength, just a whiff of it. It's moved about 10 pips now. Holy smokes. Uh, no, Igor. But I got some big plans that I'm sharing with the Forex Today staff. 
and management. And if they like it, just maybe, maybe, maybe some interesting things will be happening in the future. All right, so yeah, rip roar nothing so far, guys. Well, I was thinking about rowing down a binary, but I don't like to do binaries without volatility. And I think the window opened up on my, oh no, here it is, binary platform, here it is. No, wait, that's forks today. No, there it is. All right, that's the binary. Okay, I've got to reset the option here. So the reason I don't like to, it's a double-edged sword. If I'm right just one pip, I'll get paid the whole kit and caboodle. But if I'm wrong just one pip, I lose the whole kit and caboodle. So that's not good. And if the market's not moving, I could certainly get unlucky and have it be one or two pips against just not, because nothing happened. So if there's lots of volatility, well, I'm going to get it right on the direction. That doesn't, I have no doubt about that. So if I decide that the market's bearish, oh, it's bearish. It'll be bearish for certainly the next half hour or so. So I have no problem selling if it's bearish. Boom, I'm going to be right. Now, the only question is how right am I going to be? One pip or 50 pips? I don't really know. But I know I'm going to be a little bit right at least. And therefore, it will, will, will be appropriate because I'll get paid the, the whole kit and caboodle whether I'm right or wrong. And sometimes, this was a one-minute chart we're looking at, you know, um, you can have these massive pullbacks. But again, as long as I'm only right one pip, I'll get paid for everything. So it, to me, it's, the binaries are great for high-volatility uh, event-driven strategies. And, you know, you got costs and stuff where slippage on a, on a cash position could be sort of a hidden cost and spreads could widen, all these different things that wouldn't happen to a binary. So a little more dollar strength, that's good. We have not broken out of the range yet. Uh, Marcia, I'm, I'm already doing that stuff. I was a CTA for seven years. But I don't I don't work with clients anymore. No way. <laughs> Ron says he got paid on one binary trade for 0 0.2 pips profitable and got paid for 25. That's cool, huh? Yeah. Yeah, so guys, I, I don't mind doing free webinars. It's my way of giving back and it's my way of staying sharp. And like I said, I would have taken this whole day off. Here's some more dollar strength. And I love doing this stuff, you know, talking about it at 8.15 in the morning, saying, yeah, you know, it'll get strong. 
around 10 o'clock. The dollar will get strong, so let's plan on doing it. Here we are. It's 10.02. Dollars moved 15 pips in our direction. Cool. Right, Igor. So that's what I was saying to you earlier. Um, save your money. Get a second job. Save that money. Sell everything that you don't need. Save that money. Because you, you can't be undercapitalized in this business. Because the only way to do it is compensate it with leverage, and that's not good either. Um, I know someone that worked really hard to become a, a professional trader for several years, and um, he was quite serious. And he said, well, what do I need to do now? Um, and I said, well, what you need to do now that you're finding some trading success, um, I want you to save all your money and sell everything that you absolutely don't need. So he and his wife went through his house. And they found all the stuff they're not using, like a, the, the TV in, in a certain room and a, uh, some old jewelry and whatever. They just went through their house. They went through the garage. They sold everything. They had an extra car. They sold that. He even sold his dog. No joke. He sold his dog. Yes, I'm not joking. And I said, just keep your leverage as low as possible. Keep yourself as funded and capitalized as much as possible. And slowly grow your trade account and slowly reduce your risk and have a three-year plan so that three years from now you still might be trading the same lot size, but you might have doubled or tripled your account. And even though your lot size is the same, um, your risk per trade is ex much, much, much lower. And then once you have three years of successful trading experience under your belt and confidence and skills that you can rely on, then increase your lot size, but not until you've tripled your account. Slowly. And keep reduced because that reduces your leverage, right? So let's say you traded one standard lot and you have fifty thousand bucks. Okay. Well, you do that for three years. You're still trading one standard lot, but now you have a hundred and fifty thousand. Same trades, but risks and leverage is is lower. You understand? And then I said, after three years of successful this, feel free to grow your lot size in proportion to your trading account growing. So maybe by year six, you might be trading two and a half lots per trade. You make a thousand pips a month, you're making $25,000 a month. But not in year one, in year six. So that's what he decided to do. That's dedication. That's, but who said it was going to be easy? I'll give you examples of my own life. We're coming up to our annual family vacation. This is the, the, the week where my family goes to the beach, which means I give the wife and kids big kisses on their forehead, put them in the SUV, send them to the beach, I stay home. Huh. Oh, boo-hoo for me. <laughs> well, you know what? That's how it goes. I'm dedicated. I'm all in. And baby, I love what I do. This is it. Requires focus and discipline. Got it. So I'll be here. I'll be here for you.
Yeah, stock it away, Stephen, right? Stock it away. Don't spend it. So, for example, what if you made a uh, $1,000 a month trading, but you spent $500 a month? Your account grows by $6,000 a year, and you, and you get to spend $6,000 a year. Okay? Now, do the math, and I've done it. What if you paid yourself 25% of your profits and saved 75 At the end of the year, you might make more money. <laughs> if you're growing your lot size relative to how much is in your trading account. Do you understand? Whatever your percentage is. So you, you pay yourself 25%, save 75%, and at the end of the year, you'll make more money paying yourself 25% every month versus 50 percent it's a paradox but your account size grew that is the secret to success what did I say in the last webinar I think it, was, it might have been this webinar the secret to six not ever adding more leverage so I said imagine you had a hundred thousand dollar account right and you make a hundred pips a week Week after week after week after week after week after week after week. It's not a lot of money. But you're making fifty to a hundred thousand a year. If it's your money, right? It's not a big deal. Right? You can live on it, but it tastes like crap. Right? That kind of money. Well, what if you made a hundred a hundred uh, pips a week steady for month after month after month, year after year? And uh, you become an institutional investor, uh, and someone gives you a $10 million account. Ah! I'm making millions. What changed? Nothing except your assets under management. So listen to me. Save your money, increase your assets under management, and focus on boring, simple, day in, day out goals. They're specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. Like a lousy 100 pips a week. That's 20 pips a day. That's what you should focus on. Very conservative, disciplined trading that brings in steady results. I'm not asking you to hit home runs every time you're up to bat. Steady growth. Low risk, grow your account size, lower your leverage, and make a little bit of pips. Like blood, sweat, and tears over years. That's how you get filthy, stinking rich in Forex, guys. Have, have a three-year plan to get to mediocre. And then have another three-year plan to go from mediocre to great. Then have another three-year plan to go from great to filthy, stinking rich, doing something that you really love and enjoy and find fascinating. Well, Wayne, that means I have to work really hard for 10 years. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, 100 pips times a, a micro lot. I don't care about that. You're talking about money. I'm not. So what I'm saying, Igor, and you brought it up the last one, is like, Wayne, I have a really low resolution laptop, and I, I can't see the charts very well. Well, that's because you're underfunded. You don't have enough money. Well, you know that, and I know that. It's nothing wrong. It's not your fault. I wish money was easy, right? So what I suggested right away is save your money. Save your money, Igor. Save your money. Do some technical analysis. Get some skills under your belt. Use a demo account. Practice. Learn the marks. Develop a skill. And get a second job. And sell the stuff in your house you don't need. They can borrow money from your, your wife's dad, I think is what I said. Do something to get capitalized. And build skills technically and fundamentally, that you can rely on 
And then once you got all of that down, it might take you three years, Igor. But once you got all of that down, then start trading real money and have a reasonable amount of money so that so if you only have, let's say, a thousand bucks, and you're like, but I want to make thousand dollars a month. So really, you don't have very many skills, you don't have very much experience, and you want to make a hundred percent return every single month. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Or you take my advice. Take your Forex um, unbelievably seriously, incredibly, incredibly seriously. Look at it like you're going to Harvard Medical School to become a brain surgeon. Well, guess what? You're not going to do it your first year or your second year or your third year. But if you can get through Harvard Medical School with the skills to do brain surgery, well, hopefully you enjoy it. And second of all, you'll probably make a lot of money. But it's not about the money. It's about doing what you enjoy and you're really good at it because it's got your 100% focus. And that's what it's all about. Right? So Igor says he just wants to stop losing. Good. Here's how you do it. Guaranteed 100% success on this. You ready? Stop trading your real money. You just stopped losing. I think you said you got 400 bucks. Oh, my God. So let's let's put you on a path to like get you four thousand bucks or forty thousand bucks. How do you do that? Get a second job, save every single penny, do it for two or three years. Work at a bar, do tips, do exotic dancing, become that guy that dances with the old ladies on, on cruise ships, um, sell your bike, sell your car. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I'm not joking. That's what I would do. I would do whatever it takes. Nothing, and I mean it, nothing is going to stop me. Do you guys, did you watch that video that I put up uh, maybe two months ago about ridiculous, sickening work ethic? That's my minimum expectation. If you don't have sickening, ridiculous work ethic, uh, then you are going to trade against the 5% the of Forex traders in the world that do have that. And that's why they get 100% of the money. 5% of the people keep 100% of the money. Why? Ridiculous, sickening work ethic. And you're going up against pros. You are going up against Ivy League PhD mathematicians that have a billion dollar fund. They're not even risking their own money. And you're going up against them with low experience and, and no discipline and you're undercapitalized and you want to get rich quick. You're a liquidity event. And I don't mean you, Igor. I mean everybody in that situation. You are a liquidity event for some other guy's trade. So as soon as he's made his million dollars for the day, he, he hits exit and you're on the other side. You're like, oh, I'll take that. Boom. He just you're his liquidity event. He made his million dollars times you know ten thousand traders that lack discipline and lack a trading plan. Boom, he gets paid. They get on losing trades. He walks, you know, he gets on his helicopter, flies to the Hamptons, bu -bu 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 lives in his big palace on the beach. It's common if you're a New York City trader, you're a trader, right? It's common for guys to spend somewhere between one and three hundred thousand dollars a month renting their beach house in the summer. So how do they get that? Because they're skilled, they're disciplined, they're the smartest minds in the room, and they're well capitalized. They're well capitalized. So if you don't have the money, find a way over the next three years to get the money. You're not going to trade your way into it because you'll trade your way out of it. Okay? 
I'm speaking from the heart, Igor, not just to you, but to everybody. I'll tell you what, finding money is easy. I'll tell you what, there's as much money in the world as you could possibly want, and then more money. What there's a shortage of is someone that says to me, Wayne, on average, I can produce at least 100 pips a week, conservatively low risk, just day and day, boring trading. Sometimes I lose money, but the vast majority of the time, triple digits for sure, kind of disappointing, but I can bring you 100. Eh, sometimes it's 200. But you can count on me, Wayne, for 100 pips a week, Week after 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 week, I will get you money. I will fund you. I'll fly you all around the world and wine and dine you. And but that's not enough incentive. I don't know why. I'm just telling you what the world needs is conservative, disciplined traders that with low risk can bring in a moderate amount of reward. Too much is too good. We don't want 1,000 pip days. We want steady, freddy, boring trading that just adds up to conservative but consistent pips. If you can do that, your funding problem is away. There, there's people all over the world with money that have nowhere to park it. So they're just waiting for you. So that's that's what I'm trying to tell you. That's what you should be focused on. Conservative, disciplined, low-risk, reasonable reward trading that another person can count on. And then you will find so much success in your life that you will, f if you're not prepared, you, will not, you won't believe it's true. You won't believe you earned it. And then you will self-sabotage yourself and, and the account will blow up. So what you need to focus on is the blood, sweat, and tear years so that you, you do have control you do have consistency. You've earned your confidence. And then when you do find success and your, your simple monetary goals in your life are taken care of and you upgrade your house, you, upgrade, you buy your dog back, you get a nicer watch and a nicer car, right? You upgrade your wife. <laughs> I don't need to do that. never did. Um, then you're golden. And then you say, well, now what? That was a really good month. What am I going to do next month? And all of a sudden, everything will change. But you will believe you deserve it because you do. Because you've earned it and you have real skills and real confidence. And you put the blood, sweat, and tears for years into it. And so when suddenly money hits you, it, 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 it's, it, it might be a... It might be sort of a, you might have to get used to it personally because all of a sudden you're like, wow, I like me in this nicer house in this better neighborhood. Good. Then you sit down, shut up, and get ready for the next trade. And if you don't do it that way, guys, if you do it the quick way, even if you get a 1,000% return on, on your trading this month, first of all, you will self-sabotage. You will blow up your trading account. And second of all, you'll, you, that if you reported that to an investor, a sophisticated investor with real money, they couldn't stop laughing at how stupid that was. But you're like, I thought I made a thousand percent. And they're like, yeah, but you're stupid. And they they won't invest. So I want you to succeed. I care about you. I hope you listen. Sometimes I exaggerate for effect, but I'm trying to get a message across that you hear. I want you to succeed. 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 I want you 
to succeed. I wish for you to succeed. So peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. Stay small. Stay humble. Focus on the long term. And never risk money you cannot afford to lose. And then when you are ready to fund your account, because you do have control, consistency, confidence, and, pro and pips you can count on week after week after week, I hope you choose Trader's Way as your trading partner, as your prime broker, as your ECN. And that's that. Thank you, guys. I'll see you tomorrow at fxstreet.com. Take care.